Rahman Rahim Wa Ti Allah Wa Ti Rasul Wa Ulul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qur'aji Sadaifu, Miskeen, Uzal and Jihad and but for the grace of Allah that are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah grant us a life in which to see the holy month of Muharram and to reach to the 14th of Muharram and the holy birth of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Fard al Anam, Fard al Arsh Shah Kun, and that Qaddus Allah Siru that Allah to make us from this most blessed way and these most blessed souls to watch over us, dress us, and grant us from their inheritance of what Allah has dressed upon the holy soul of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that say that I was a, a awliya thousands of years before the soul of any awliya created. And the immensity of the secret of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and the immense blessings that Mawlana Shah Naqshaban but the Siru brought for the Muhammadan way and for the realities of Muhammadiyoon that Allah granted that honour to that blessed soul and put that in Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah and that Allah granted us to be from the tariqah and to inherit from the tariqah its knowledges, its way, its reality. Anybody sitting and listening to this is a tremendous gift from Allah that Allah gave the gift and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then gave to these ashiqiyoon, these huge souls, these realities and secrets of Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah. And alhamdulillah that as the students of the way we all sit and benefit from the immensities of its fruits and nourish our soul that is an eternal nourishment. So alhamdulillah that Allah granted us this immense blessing and immense rewards from the realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban and the broadcast that went out on the weekend mashaAllah they put together very quickly from the realities of a tree and the ultimate tree of these realities, the, the apex and pinnacle of these realities that Allah gave from the soul that when Allah created the universal soul, the Muhammadan soul that what he partitioned of wilayat and those souls that would contain these realities to draw people to the tree of life, the tree of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salam. Inna huwa Suleiman wa inna huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. That the ultimate tree of all realities is the tree of Sayyidina Muhammad as Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. That everything flowing from that abundant tree in Sidrat al Muntaha, that all of these are from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad So all of them are a reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that from which something comes is from that ocean and that reality. That when we read about Sidrat al-Muntaha, the low tree, the tree of the farthest boundary, all of these in this Muhammadiyun teaching is created from what light? Muhammadun Rasulullah So means that all of these are Muhammadun Rasulullah And they manifest throughout paradises and realities to show the greatness that Allah has dressed upon Prophet and when he came to the tree of the farthest boundary, the low tree and he swore upon that tree, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. 
and from its rivers flowing into the ponds of Kawthar. And that was again that only in the way of haqqaiq and realities we know that everything is created from Muhammadun Rasulullah So what an immense reality that that tree of reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah and from it is flowing the realities of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. This is the ocean of milk, the, the rivers of milk, the rivers of water, the rivers of, of life, the, the wine and the nectar of life, the honey of, of intercession and shifa. That all of that flowing from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of that is made from nur and light. All of that is made from Muhammadun Rasulullah means the depth in which to enter into the ocean of reality when we understand that Allah created all these creations in the heavenly kingdom from Nurul Muhammadi means that which it's made from its essence is from that reality. So the one that contains all of that reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah and that was the importance of the understanding of these trees of knowledge. That when we sit and Allah destines for us that sit under that tree as a destiny within your life that you're going to inherit from these trees and the tree inherits from the Lut tree, from the tree of the furthest boundary, the tree of the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah which Prophet describes for us that when he saw that tree because all of the visions of paradise and lights and all those realities was the marifa of Sayyidina Muhammad That Prophet is describing for us, I saw the, the tree of life and upon it everything, everything was upon the tree on the leaves and all of the, the roots of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem flowing into the pond of Kawthar. And when he asked Sayyidina Jibreel that, what is this pond? He says, this is the fountain of Kawthar that Allah has given to you. But even deeper is that all of that is from Muhammadun Rasulullah So the immensity of these knowledges and this tree and the symbolism of a tree of life and the tree of knowledge, the tree of the furthest bounty means that the highest reality that is going to grant us the fruits, the greatest fruit to receive the greatest uh, sustenance to sustain ourselves is the Muhammadiyun, the Haqiqat al Muhammadiyya, the Muhammadan realities. That is the, the greatest tree to be taking from, and that awliyaullah symbolize that tree upon this earth from the fountain of that tree in paradise. It waters their tree, it waters their reality and they bear the fruits from that tree and from its oceans of realities. And that's Warath and Muhammadiyya that they bring upon this earth the guidance and the realities of the Muhammadan reality. And that's the immensity of the fruits and the immensity of the blessings that Allah has given to us. Before we ask for things in life or be disappointed for the things that we wanted and we perceive that we don't have, Allah and Prophet is always reminding us that, look you eat and drink from that tree. If you're in these associations, you're hearing these associations, you've been raised in these associations means Allah raised us in a paradise association beyond even understandings of paradise and granted us to sit under these trees and to take from its fruits and from its realities. And that's the immensity and the immensity of the blessings that if we give the shukr and thankfulness to Allah for what He's truly bestowed, not what we wanted but what Allah has really given to us, then Allah inshaAllah that if you thank me, I give you more means the expansion of the heart and soul. That how can the heart and soul expand if it truly doesn't appreciate what Allah has already given of its realities? And that's why Prophet described, Arifa nafsahu, Arifa rabbahu. Arifa nafsahu, when we understand the, the nafs of who, Allah will open up 
the rabt of who and the immensities of the oceans of who and the immensity of the oceans of these oceans of reality, the one whom enters into their own heart so that they can find the tree of life within their existence. If they can wash that tree, clean that tree, cleanse that tree, what will our Allah nourish it from? From the Lord of who? Means that when we understood the tree of the furthest bounty and boundary that Allah has given the immensity of the tree of life that every reality is upon that tree and Allah is giving guidance through Prophet that find yourself that when you've enrolled into these schools our life is to find ourselves. Find the reality of, of, of the nafs, find what is, is governing ourselves, what is looking ourselves into the reality of the soul. That if we can overcome the nafs we're now entering towards the reality of the soul. Only by knowing the self that awliyaullah are coming and teaching all that Prophet was going to Allah put within every insan. So as soon as they look inside for their spiritual path they see a tree which is called the bronchial tree. And if they can understand that I have to illuminate my lungs, I have to illuminate my breath, I have to safeguard my chest, I have to clean my heart, I begin my inward journey in Muharram. Means that the, the immensity of the soul of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that Allah give everything like programmers a clue that this soul is coming on the first of Muharram and celebrating for us on the 14th. Well there's 114 surahs of Holy Qur'an so that those whom are seeking understanding Allah is giving for us this is one of the big secrets of Holy Qur'an for if you can understand who this soul is, love him, be within the tariqah that he's brought, the realities that he's brought Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, he's guiding to the secret of this kawthar. Means this whole journey into the heart of Prophet that ended on hajj into the oceans of kawthar, to the oceans and the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad These are one of the big ships of that reality that Allah gives to us to sign 114 first Muharram, 14th day that this is a secret ship into the reality of Holy Qur'an and to the secret of every ayat al kareem every Surat al kareem that is in this Holy Qur'an that flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that when we look into ourselves, purify the heart, purify our reality, cleanse the heart then we begin to understand I have my own tree within myself and everything that I'm seeking of Allah's reality Allah is teaching for us, Prophet is teaching عَرَفَ النَّفْسَهُ وَعَرَفَ رَبُّهُ Everything that you're seeking is already within yourself. If you can unlock yourself then the kingdom of light begins to flow into your reality. So it means that to understand my heart and that is the, the, the location of the Divine Essence where everything today in school and in, in the education of the youth is about the mind and they say you have to use your mind and in reality the aqal and intellect in which Allah created the aqal first is actually located in the heart and not the head. The aqal is in the heart of insan not in their head because <laughs> Allah's ancient aqal is what? Make sure you don't spell wrong. Ain qaf lam. Give me a nod, yes or no? Ajit Shahzad, you don't speak Urdu? 
Aqal. Yes. So it means that Aqal its sign is Ayn, Allah's mm -hmm. Aleem, ancient knowledge. Ancient knowledge never flows into the head. Right? So Marifa comes and teaches us that Allah's command is only to the heart. Allah's not in heaven, not on earth, but I'm in the heart of my believer. What if Allah's in the heart? Allah's sitting in somebody's heart, astaghfirullah? No, but when Allah is giving reference that I'm in the heart of the believer that my uloom and my knowledge is. Because the highest degree for mankind is knowledge. Whom Allah granted, ilm al wa hikmati bi salihin has been given a tremendous gift. So first on your list is when Allah loves you, He gives you knowledge, not cash, not this, not that. Allah's sign of love and ishq is that He gives you in maladuni wa hikmati bi salihin by lisan al aliyah. So it means this is Allah's greatest gift is knowledge. And the one whom have been stowed knowledge, Allah calls them abd. Because they are the people of the Ayn and Ayn also is for vision. Allah opened their vision as a result their alim, their alims whom Allah gave an ancient knowledge and their titles are abd, servants of Allah not servant like slave but this is an honourable title in which Allah granted these servants knowledge. That they are the, the masters of the ba, and they are the dalil and the guides for all of creation. So the servant whom is in training to be an abd, ayn ba dal, that Allah granted them knowledge. So aqal which illuminates the entire of creation, the first that created is Allah's Ayn and this whole of creation is coming into existence by knowledge, ancient knowledge. And then the what? Knowledges that flowing through Qur'an. It means that knowledge is not in the head. So when we deal with the youth they say, oh no, no intellect, we have to use our intellect, it's the head, it's the head. I said, no, no it's nothing to do with the head. Head is your most dangerous, your most dangerous vehicle because the, the head can partner with shaitan and your nafs. What Allah is making reference to of aqal we know that knowledge it's Vessel is a heart, not a brain. And that's why the first of zikr is La ilaha illallah, La, no head, ilaha illallah, nothing but Allah. The knowledge that these awliyaullah bring to this earth and its capacity is flowing into the heart, not the head. So the intellect and aql is the heart. When the heart has compassion, the heart has love, the heart has cleanliness and good character, it's granted an intellect, a wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge flows into the heart, wisdom flows into the heart with humility and good character. And as a result the tariqah teaches you, shut off your head, <coughs> turn that weapon off. Your head is going to be weaponized in dunya because a head with no heart is a very dangerous vessel. It doesn't have compassion, it doesn't have any understanding and it's hijacked by shaitan and the nafs. So means the turuqs come to teach the way Allah wanted us to be understood and to taught. That they attained the rahmah and then we taught them knowledges. 
means that this path of humility is shutting off the head. Don't think with the head, the head is just merely a screen. If you void the head but think through the heart, contemplate through the heart that the illumination and the knowledge is come into the heart. When you sit and meditate and have good character everything is based off of the qalb and the heart. And when you shut off the faculty of the head what happens? The illumination of the heart begins to shine upon your screen. So your computing and CPU is the heart, your face is merely the screen. It shows the condition of your heart. If the heart is illuminated the face is nurani. If the heart is darkened the face is narani, fiery, dark because they have nothing in their heart but they speak and they may know many languages. But a dead heart is very dangerous speech, very dangerous characteristics and that's what the schools and education platforms are conditioning students for. Don't think with your heart, everything is contained within your head. An intellect and knowledge is in the head, say, no, no, there's nothing in the head, just a, a vehicle for shaitan to hijack. The illumination and the knowledges take place within the heart of the servant. And the head is where the ego and the conditioning, if they can condition themselves to be humble and not listen to everything the shaitan saying of fight and argue and, and complain because that's all of the head. Every complaint is coming from the head, never the heart. Every, every doubt and every, every thought that is against Allah is through the head and not the heart. And everything good and based on ibadah and worshipness and good character and khuluq and humility. And when you do humility and humbling acts in life you illuminate the heart, you feel in your heart when you feed people and do good charitable deeds, you feel it in your heart not in your head. So it means these awliyaullah are coming into our lives to teach us these knowledges, these trees of reality, the immensity of what Allah is dressing and blessing that it takes a time in which to illuminate the heart, purify the heart. That ask for the, that light and Allah to send knowledges within the heart, condition the mind not to think, not to analyze everything into the head but meditate within the heart for an understanding that Allah open the heart of the servant in which they begin to understand the tree and their breath and they see their lungs and the importance of their lungs is how to breathe how to oxygenate their lungs, how to bring the breath of rahmah, nafas of rahmah into their being in which they breathe and every tariqah its path and every shaykh in Naqshbandiya described our way is based on the breath. Who lost their breath they lost their way. They became heedless of the fact of their breath because there's no smoking, there's no harming. There's nothing to do that could harm the breath when it's your source of your entire spiritual sustenance. So it means the immensity, in the immensity of that understanding then the tariqahs come to bring that reality. So that when we see the tree within myself and I want to reach to Sidratul Muntaha, I want to reach to the tree of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, to the tree of Sayyidina Muhammad then their only advice is then reach to your own tree. That perfect your inner breath, perfect your spiritual practices, cleanse the heart, negate your head in a world where it's actually the reverse. Everything around us now is about activating your head and negating your heart. So your fight just became a thousand times more difficult. Everything now is conditioned on activate your head, your head, your head, your head and there's absolutely no more mention of the heart and they think it's a, it's a vessel that's not even necessary anymore. And that becomes the great, the great struggle in the last days on how to revive my heart and negate my head. We pray that Allah grant us from the immensity of their realities 
and that we reach to our tree for if we should reach to our tree, nourish our tree, breathe with the breath and the force of Divine love and Divine power into the tree, into the heart, into the lungs of myself, Allah will nourish it from paradise trees, from the tree of the Lut tree of the farthest boundary in which its flows and its waters and its realities flow into the heart and into the soul of that servant. That's what this 12 months, this pilgrimage is all the way to the 12th month is the kawthar. That Allah opened the kawthar fountains of paradise to flow into the soul of servants. And Allah granted us a reality from the zamzam. The zamzam its power and its flow is from paradise from the kawthar. Anyone wishing to drink from the kawthar drinks from the zamzam. The drink with the reality and read from Surat al-Kawthar when you're drinking from the zamzam, the Ya Rabbi open for me the reality of this zamzam and that its source is from the holy kawthar, that to be washed in it, to be bathed in it, to be drinking from it and drink from the level of my soul and the purification of my soul to take all of its realities of light within my being inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha